I was someone that would book for a lot of years, you know, just especially uh, when I was playing poker, you got to get very used to uh, potentially being broke. And more importantly, you have to mentally be able to pivot within a second, right? Uh, you can have, when you play poker, you know, your lifeline is your bankroll. And so the best, the ones that survived the longest as poker players without going bust over and over again are not the best players. They're the ones that have the most discipline in terms of their managing their bankroll. And so what does that really mean? It means that when the inevitable very large luck factor comes into play when you're playing, um, you know, I would sit down at a $20,000 bankroll ongoing. And whenever it was above that, that was money for me. Um, I would sit down at a table with a thousand dollars. If I lost that thousand, I should be done for the day. If I won a thousand, I should be done for the day. And so around two thirds of the days I played, I ended up either winning a thousand or close to it. Uh, so long story short, there's going to be hands that are the most ridiculous thing that you feel like have ever happened in that moment. It's just one card possibility for the person for two or three grand, right? And that person hit the card and you're sitting there like, okay, logically, I know I'm a better player. Logically, I know that over time, I will take this MF with money. <laughs> but, uh, you know, you need to also have the luck component to play it out. And you need to stay disciplined in terms of playing in a correct fashion and have that patience and wait it out. And if you try to sort of alter your play to play more hands that that potential player is in, the sucker, then you can screw yourself over. Right. And so in the moment, that's extremely difficult sometimes, especially when, you know, a sort of important amount of money is on the line, meaning, I mean, it's a very emotional experience. And so there aren't a lot of people that are able to handle that. But I think if you get to the point that you can handle it, the things that happen on a, in a business context are small in comparison. And so when it came time to, oh, my God, we have to change our idea, I'm like, who cares? It makes a lot more sense. And people with money that are in position to do things for us are saying, hey, we like this. We, there's almost an implication that they would want to put more money into it, even though we we're getting a blanket investment. And the online college course pass is a cool thing, but it doesn't have this gigantic ceiling. Um, but managing 55% of the rental market was huge. So uh, I don't think it was very difficult. It certainly wasn't something that I spearheaded. Uh, it was just a matter of getting with the program and having a problem with it or not. <laughs> Beautiful. What I heard was humility, flexibility, adaptability, and responsiveness to what the market and people are actually telling you. Um, and I love how you were able to contextualize an emotional experience in poker preparing you for business and making business actually seem kind of like light work in comparison. What, what would you say has been the biggest competitive advantage of getting so comfortable with being broke? I think it's a huge advantage because, um, you know, that company would, was again, venture funded. My other project that I built to exit were all bootstrapped by myself. In the case of all three of those companies, I really didn't have much money at all getting them going uh, and these, you know, especially in the beginning, were not blockbuster companies. And I didn't have like a huge, like nine figure exit. Point being, you figure out how to be lean. <laughs> uh, I think a lot of people, um, you know, we're both on Twitter. We essentially met on there. Um, a lot of people are just trying to figure out a way to invest or borrow or, you know, figure out a way to throw money at the problem. Uh, they want to jump in. They want to jump in, you know, hitting the ground running. And if there's an issue, they try to pay their way out of it. Where when you're lean, uh, you're forced to be more resourceful. You're forced to, again, you know, not just pivot sometimes in terms of the idea, but also pivot the way in which you're going to get something implemented or fulfill services for a client. Uh, you have to be creative. And uh, the initial sort of forceful environment can develop that muscle, as you were saying earlier, of 
eventually wanting to be creative, wanting to figure out a way to spend less money, and wanting to essentially pre- preserve margin while um, you know continuing to serve your clients. There is something really important in that you've done both. You've been uh, venture backed and you've bootstrapped, so you can understand the value of uh, a business that's fundamentally sound versus a business that just looks really attractive in VC land.